if you've been around churchy people very long, especially when there's something going wrong and someone's struggling or a particular thing hasn't been able to be paid for quite as quickly as it might have been, you will have heard someone say, God shall supply all your needs. Hello, I'm Ian Curry and this is Thinking Out Loud. Today I'm thinking about how God supplies all our needs. Come on, let me tell you what I think. Having worked with international mission projects for half my life, I've seen a huge number of projects and individuals struggle and hear those God shall supply all your needs words at the same time. Sadly, sometimes the words were coming from people that were going back to their comfortable home to eat a lovely dinner, which may very well have included one of my favorite desserts, trifle. The trouble with trifle, like many desserts, is it takes considerably longer to make than it does devour. This isn't a cooking show, but I'll make an exception and show you how a trifle is built in just a moment. Now, do you see how easy it was to get distracted from our topic today? One minute we're saying God shall supply all your needs and the next we're talking about how to build a trifle. Perhaps instead I could have been the way God would supply if I had thought about it for a minute or two. But if supplying need depends on people, why does Paul say that famous line? And before I try to answer the question, let me tell you a couple of stories. Now, these stories are true stories, so I won't start with the once upon a time, though they are quite strange enough to do so. Growing up in a large family, there were, there were sometimes lean times and we sometimes saw firsthand how things needed to happen to keep us all fed and clothed. One weekend we were all at home and we sat down around the dinner table. Unusually there was no smell of cooking coming from the kitchen and we didn't know what was being prepared. Mum was sitting with us and not in the kitchen so we knew something wasn't quite right. Dad sat down at the head of the table and we all put our hands together and closed our eyes. Dad prayed and, well, that part was normal. But instead of praying something like, thank you God for this lovely food that has been prepared, he prayed, thank you God for the lovely food you are going to provide. And then he went on a bit, but we were used to that. After all, he was a preacher and so we just thought he was doing a bit of overtime or something. Eventually, Dad said, Amen, and we all opened our eyes and said, Amen, too. But before we had time to wonder what was actually for dinner, the doorbell rang, and Dad got up and said, That will be dinner, I expect. Sure enough, in just a moment, he returned with a big pot of something that smelled really lovely, and soon dinner was being eaten. Mum really looked surprised, and asked, who was at the door? And Dad said, well, it was our neighbour. They said they had expected their family to be visiting today, but unfortunately, they've been unable to come. They'd already prepared this food uh, for them and wondered if we could use it since we have a big family. They hoped we didn't mind. Uh, no, we, we didn't mind at all. We were all too young to really understand the significance of what had just happened. But we did understand was that there were hungry children, Dad prayed, and now we were eating. The second story is very much related to the first. Many years later, um, we were at home in our kitchen and we had a number of friends there. Our house always seems to be a place where people just turn up and we were all sitting around the table about to drink tea after dinner. Hilary had rustled something up for our unexpected guests. And we were 
happily chatting away. There was no dessert because trifle takes time to make and, as I said, the guests weren't expected. First you put pieces of sponge cake into a bowl, then you add fruit salad or pieces of fruit. Then you prepare jelly. Here it's called jello, but either way. You pour that in on top and let it set. Once that part is set, you prepare custard, and it has to be the proper stuff. That gets spread around, and of course there's a spoon to lick at just about every stage. After that is set, the cream is whipped. And that gets put on top. And to prove you whipped it to just the right consistency, you can pull it up with a back of a spoon and it makes a lovely inviting pattern. Then the important part, you leave it alone in the fridge. No fridge, no dessert. During the evening with our friends and no dessert, the idea of how God provides was being discussed and I recounted the story I've just told you of how long ago God provided our dinner through a neighbor. We were just saying to each other that Sometimes being in need is when we see how well God is able to provide and how wonderful it is when he does. I said, wouldn't it be lovely though if God did something like that just once in a while just because, you know, just to show how he provides. Right at that moment the doorbell rang and I got up and went to the door expecting to find more of our unexpected friends. But I joked as I went, that will be dessert. And there was a chuckle around the table. And at the door was one of our neighbors. They said, we saw you had some friends over. Well, our refrigerator has broken down and things are going to spoil if we don't use them. We had expected family to the weekend and we'd made this lovely trifle. Could you share it with your friends? I hope you don't mind. I had to take a moment before I could go back to the kitchen. In that moment, I realized several things. First, God has a sense of humor too. And second, uh, there is no changing with God. He's always the same. And then, yes, I realized that he does indeed provide through friends and neighbors. Look with me at the place where the famous quote is found. Philippians chapter 4, Paul says, And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Do you see there is more to that verse than just the God shall supply all your needs part? Let me look at the verse right before. I know many of you knew I'd do that, didn't you? You Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news and then traveled on from Macedonia. No other church did this. Even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me help more than once. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. At the moment, I have all I need and more. I am generously supplied with the gifts you sent me with Epaphroditus. They are a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. And then we get the famous part. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches. Well now, that's quite a different picture, isn't it? Do you see how Paul is recounting the way his dinner was provided by the people in the church in Philippi just as as a boy, my dinner was supplied in the very same way. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs. God has chosen to use us to answer the prayers of others of his family. Right at the start of the program, I asked if supplying need depends on people, why does Paul say the famous line, God shall supply all your needs? Well, I think we've shown that by reading the whole story and hearing how both dinner 
and years later dessert, were provided through God's family, that this is perhaps a preferred method God has of indeed supplying all of our needs. When we start thinking and doing things as an extended family, God is able to prompt us when it's our turn to be an answer to someone's prayer asking God for help. Can you imagine if our neighbor had decided to throw out that lovely dessert instead of allowing God to nudge her to walk to our front door? What a terrible waste of a lovely trifle. Are you allowing God to use you to provide for the needs of someone else? Have you ever prayed and asked God who you should be giving a gift to without them asking or even showing that they need something? Oh, and trifle is a rather lovely thing for God to decide was the dessert. One of these days you'll have to visit, just drop by and see if there's one in our fridge. If you've enjoyed this video, share it with your friends. You can copy that link and do that at the bottom of the video there. Leave a comment in the comments below and if you haven't already done so, subscribe. Now until next time, goodbye.